Welcome back, students. This is Professor Castor, again, taking you on another short course that breaks down our large courses into more bite-sized chunks. Also, I apologize for the sound quality of the actual recording itself. The intro and outro to this particular short course was recorded after the course was actually done. So it's a little bit quieter, but I think we will be all right. So let's begin. Wormwood, Tree of Fate, and Cassius, the Oath Keeper. Circle Warlock and Black Clad Solo. The druids of the Circle Oberos have made countless alliances and bargains and have manipulated myriad groups to ensure their agendas. But some of these arrangements have been far more lasting than others. The first omnipotent sealed ominous bargains with manifestations of the worm given form on Cain. Entities such as the Lord of Feast and Wormwood, also called the Tree of Fate. These primal entities proved a formidable but demanding allies. Before Meenith gave humanity its first law and taught them to erect its first wall, the carnivorous tree named Wormwood had taken root. Unlike most trees, it was thirsty for blood and quickly manifested an unusual deep and predatory intelligence. These first druids used their influence to persuade the devourer cultists to conduct sacrifices below the spread of its branches. The scattered tribes of the hinterlands traveled great distances to pour libations of blood upon the soil above its roots and hang skeletal offerings from its leafless limbs. These terrible rites accumulated in a great ritual wherein thousand men and beasts were bled out to give the tree a worthy feast. Unfettered powers of creation thrummed in the air as the roots burst forth to entwine itself around the young druid through which the tree spoke its name. The rite gave Wormwood a human voice, and the first communion a lasting pact was sealed. Only the omnipotents know the exact nature of this agreement, but since the time one druid in every age must uphold the special covenant with the Tree of Fate, the druid gives over life and soul to become a conduit between Wormwood and the human master of the Circle Oberos. Wormwood's unfathomable mind does not perceive Cain or even the passage of days as mortals do, and so requires an intermediary, a filter to lesser minds fixed in time. Effortlessly tapping into the natural energies below the skin of the world, the tree comes and goes at its whim. Though it appears to be permanently rooted, it can disappear in a shimmer of fog and manifest elsewhere. Its ability to drink from the ley lines and to wield the power to affect the world are vast and fearsome, putting even the omnipotence to shame. Recent years have seen the wormwood yield this power and vanish entire armies and send them where it wills. For generations, Wormwood has made its home at the heart of various dark forests and on remote mountains. Devourer cultists seek out to nourish their primal gods with the blood of sacrifice. The ranking druids of the Circle Oberus periodically offer their own supplications in exchange for its wisdom. Wormwood is invited to attend the highest circle deliberations, where it has special privileges. When the Omnipotents cannot unanimously agree, Wormwood is empowered to intervene providing its unique perspective on the world. Mortal flesh ages, and when the time comes for Wormwood to choose a new conduit, the potent gathers their wilders. These novice druids are chosen for their youth, stamina, and mystical potential. Being selected for this group is a dubious honor. Leading druids may arrange for favored subordinates to be absent from the selection ceremony. On the night of the Giramor feast, a sacred rite celebration one of the most ancient champions of the Devourer Worm, Wormwood, casts aside its old Oathkeeper who perishes. At the time moment, Wormwood's roots entwine around its selected candidate, who speaks the ancient word of the Oath. Once this vow is completed, the tree integrates itself into the Druid's flesh. The Oathkeeper's personality lingers beyond this joining. Each generation of the tree's perspective is colored by the mind of its conduit. Cassius, the current chosen, was a cunning and intuitive druid who earned the jealous ire of his master over some perceived affront. The old master thought this slight avenged when Wormwood selected his troublesome apprentice, but his satisfaction was short-lived. The mentor soon perished and was forgotten, while Cassius persists. Perhaps as a result of his influence, Wormwood has been increasingly active in recent decades. Wormwood's goals often coincide with those of the Circle Oberos. But its ultimate ends are its own. It pursues an agenda heedless of the Circle's stated aim, and at time the tree's actions run contrary to the desires of the Omnipotence. 
This has never been more evident than when the tree and its conduit conspired to release the devourer worm physically on Cain. Only with the combined efforts of the omnipotent and powerful Trolkan mystics prevented the worm from rampaging on Cain. Such actions have sustained the relationship between Wormwood and the Circle's leadership. It is too potent an ally for them to disregard. Though the tree accepts any sacrifice, it thrives best on blood and souls of its own enemies. The war hosts it leads seem to become particularly vicious when it urges them onward. In every conflict, the tree of fate judges the worth of the fallen, allies and enemies alike, as it soaks its roots with their gore. Its violence suggests the end awaiting all things should the devourer fully awaken. I can't say I've ever run into a man-eating tree before, outside the little tiny ones that the druids like to use that can absorb souls and people channel th spells through it. I guess this might just be the, I don't know, the grandfather of those types of trees. Uh, in the archives it says this thing even can absorb somebody's soul, making it even more of a terror on the battlefield. Terror being the prime word since it is technically just a living tree. Also even more terrifying if you were just on an expedition in the middle of some dark forest somewhere and you ran into one of the oldest living used warlocks of Olbros and his druid apprentice to just destroy your entire army or just make it disappear and pop up somewhere else. Truly terrifying to behold. Alrighty students, well that does it for this short course. And as always, thank you Private Tier Press for letting us read your fantastic lore. And as always, your homework is going to be please like, subscribe, comment, let me know how I'm doing and share it with your friends and fellow gamers alike so we can increase the class size. And as always, class dismissed.